For most of my life, one of my favorite styles of fishing has been finesse fishing in deep, clear water with light spinning tackle. It presents a real challenge because the fish can be very finicky, very spooky. They can see your bait, they can see your line, they can see the boat, they can sense movement. It can be a very difficult circumstance. On today's show, we're gonna try out a lake I've never been to before that's got just that kind of water and will employ that style of fishing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Glad you're with us. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. <laughs> It's time for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Well, I am really excited about today and I'm so glad you're along with us because I always look forward to those days when I get to put a check mark in one more lake, river, or bay system that I've never been to before. And that is the case today as I welcome you in just over my left shoulder to beautiful Bull Shoals Lake. We are located about as far north in the state of Arkansas as you can go. Now, Bull Shoals Lake is actually formed by the White River. It runs out of Table Rock Lake up in Missouri, down through Tanicomo Lake, and then right into Bull Shoals, and then right on down into some of the greatest trout fishing water in the state of Arkansas. But on today's show, we're going to be focusing on some of the smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass population that lives right here in Bull Shoals. It's a steep canyon style lake with lots of really clear water. So we'll be using some finesse light tackle techniques to see if we can get these fish to bite today. And while I've got the Nitro Z20 rigged out with the Mercury Pro XS 150 out on the lake today, we're gonna to be taking you around your local region for this week's fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters they know where the fish are biting in your local lakes, rivers, and bays, and they'll share that with you today. So right now, let's get this thing started by launching the boat in Bull Shoals. We get you back to the FSN studios for your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are indicating that this weekend will be a fantastic time to go fishing. Sunday is forecast to have good game fish activity, while Saturday's conditions are listed as excellent. For top daylight action, anglers should be on the water by noon. Sunrise will take place at 6.48 on Saturday with sunset occurring at 8.03. And Friday has a full moon, so weekend evenings should be bright. Stay with us for regional fishing updates from around the area. And I'll return with Bassmaster Angler Chris Lane on this week's Ask the Pro. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat. It's a tracker. Costa sunglasses. See what's out there. Mercury Marine, official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. There's one. Wow, he came up and got it on the way up as I was just reeling that bait up. That is a little spotted bass for you. That's one of the three species that's prolific in this lake, large mouth, small mouth, and right there, a spotted bass. All right, we got it going here. We're tucked way back in a canyon, so it's pretty dark in here. But uh, let me get you set up and oriented for Bull Shoals Lake. Two things about this lake, steep and deep. You can see right here in front of me, see that bank way up there. These are big, high rolling canyons here in the Ozark Mountains. And this water is plenty deep. I'm only about maybe 25 feet off the shore here behind me. And it's about 30 feet deep right here. So this thing falls off in a big hurry. In fact, I came out of the river channel pulling into this big creek. It was 121 feet deep just right outside this creek right here. So this is a really deep lake you want some wind and you want some cloud cover when you fish this lake. Why? It's gin clear. You can see 10, 12, 15 feet down in this water. So when you come here, you want to leave all your heavy bass tackle, all your big bait cast stuff and your big line at home. You need light spinning gear and I'll talk some about the specific gear you need and the baits, but we're going small, we're going small line, small finesse baits and uh, trying to fish the dark sides of these canyons. That sun's gonna get up over the top of those trees right there and bring the sun straight on the water. And when it does, the fish can get even more finicky. So try to stay in the shade, stay where you have some wind, fish the windy side, 
because you want the surface to be broken up. So those are some real keys to fishing a lake like this, but it's deep, it's clear, it's steep, and it's got three good species of bass in it. There's one to get it started. Let's get you started with Fishing and Lake Reports from where you live. This part of the program is brought to you by Miralure, the right tools to catch them. From topwater plugs to subsurface models to deep running lures like the deadly heavy dean. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Well, spring weather has been windy and tough, but over in Mississippi, the red fishing has still been great. These are fish three to six pounds around the Barrier Islands, Cat Island, Ship Island, Horn Island, and also over in the Biloxi Marsh. Uh, morning is the best time to go because the wind kicks up and you want to try to beat that wind and it makes the fishing tough. But if you can find a falling tide early in the morning, that's the time to be there. Uh, trout fishing also has been good in Mississippi around the rubble reefs. Uh, these are the artificial reefs by Katrina. Uh, the Kessler Reef and the White House Reef also have been good. Uh, Sight sheepshead fishing has been great also in Mississippi. Uh, you need really clear water. These are very spooky fish. They take a small piece of shrimp on a small hook. You have to use a long fluorocarbon leader. It's not easy fishing, but that sight fishing is just an absolute gas. Spanish mackerel trollers are doing real well. Uh, dragon spoons on the south side of the barrier islands. These are one to two pound Spanish. They're great fun light tackle fish and they're good eating when they're fresh. In Georgia, uh, Captain Brad Stewart up on Tybee Island near Savannah has been doing real well inshore though for a slot redfish and flounder. He likes young incoming tides and he's working around the Wausau Sound south channel of the Savannah River using popping corks and mud minnows and one to three feet of water. He likes those tapering shell bar edges and that's where he's drifting those corks and mud minnows back to get fish. Uh, in St. Simon's Island, triple tail are on the beach and Spanish mackerel are there too. It's a good time to get out in the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Welcome to the Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi Freshwater Fishing Report. This week's update is brought to you by Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. Boasting 69,000 acres of clear blue perfection, the area offers hotels, lakefront cabins, public boat ramps and restaurants. If you prefer big fish in a big pond, Gunnersville is the right destination. www.fishgunnersvillelake.com This week, the largemouth bass and the blueback herring are both spawning in the shallows on Clark's Hill Lake on the Savannah River in northeast Georgia. These big bass are also feeding on those bluebacks all along the shore of this massive 71,000 acre impoundment on the Georgia-South Carolina border. The place to fish is over gravel bottoms where there's gaps between islands and the shore. Be out there at first light and walk the dog with a Zara spook or you can throw a spinner bait. Later in the day, start tossing Carolina rig plastic lizards in the same area, but drop back to eight to 10 feet of water. The Little River Arm on the Georgia side of the reservoir has lots of this kind of cover. In Alabama, also look for those large mouths to be surface feeding in the flats in the upper end of Logan Martin Lake near Birmingham. On the lower part of the lake, they'll be around boat docks. Again, a Zara spook or a pop R is a good choice. Now the Mississippi River is giving up lots of big flathead cats right now all along the western shore of Mississippi. The live shiners and goldfish are the baits to be using for these big cats. There's one. Smalley. All right. I'm gonna slip a net under him because I've got really light line on here. Only six pound test. And I caught a smallmouth. All right, welcome back everybody. There's a nice little chunk for you right there. Caught him on a little Jean LaRue rally grub. I'll show that to you at the end of the show. Give you a quick look at a Bull Shoals Lake Smalley while I try to get us off this bank and out of the wind right here. We've had a big wind come up all of a sudden, which is a good thing and a bad thing on Bull Shoals. It makes it hard to control the boat, but it helps the fishing a little bit. I want to mention a couple of the kinds of fishing that are available here. I mentioned the small mouse, the spotted bass, the large mouse, all of those. But, uh, you know, not far from here, there's a lot of trout fishing available. Tanny Como and on the White River, down where it comes out of Bull Shoals here below the dam. 
You've got big striper fishing around here. Bull Shoals just produced a 65 pound striped bass last year that broke the Missouri state record. Gigantic striper. They feed on rainbow trout around here. That's the reason that they grow so big. So you've got striper fishing, you've got trout fishing, you've got all kinds of bass fishing. It's really just a fishing mecca around here. And Bull Shoals, where we are today, we're, we're out of the uh, Lead Hill area which is uh, kind of on the Mid Lake area. It's only about 45 minutes to an hour from Branson and all the entertainment that goes on for the whole family there. So it's really just a fantastic area. All right, I'm gonna try to get myself out of this wind a little bit. While I'm doing that, you get yourself some fishing and lake reports. Hey guys, welcome this week's Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. This week's report's brought to you by Vicious LED Lighting. You know, it doesn't really matter what your needs are, marine, auto, agriculture, ATV, Vicious has a light that's perfect for the job. Not only is it perfect, it's probably the best light out there as far as price, quality, backed by a five-year factory warranty. Check them out at www.viciousledlighting.com to see how they can light up your world. Guys, let's talk fishing. Let's talk crappie fishing. In Tennessee and Kentucky right now, the crappie fishing is where it's at. I've heard reports of over three, if not four, but for sure three, crappie this week caught on the Kentucky Lake between Paris and New Johnsonville over three pounds and for this region those are monsters. Um, Chickamauga, Watts Bar on the Tennessee River also, Lake Barkley on the Cumberland River and Real Foot Lake. My, my buddy, a, a good friend and guide Billy Blakely over there at Blue Bank Resort, he and his clients have just been just been tearing up the big slabs for the past week. Now here's the deal, they're spawning. They're up around the bank, they're, they're shallow, uh, they're, they're on, look for firm bottom, gravel, uh, chunk rock, but look for, a, uh, look for a place where there's cover mixed in with that, where you've got uh, treetops, lay down, stake bed stumps. That, that's what's going on right now. They're real easy to catch. Guys, uh, the bass are biting too, but let's talk about crappie. Get you a piece of plastic, put it on a jig head, get you a minnow, put it under a weight, put it under a float, and just go dobbing around. Great time to take a uh, a, a new fisherman, a new angler, and let them have a good time and have something great to eat. Guys, we'd love to see you here. God bless. Fish on, fish, 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 fish. Got it. All right, something bit it. Come up in that bright sunshine and tell me what you are. Little small mouth. All right, well, he's a fish anyway. That bright bronze colored smallie right there. Just a little chunk. For this quick break right here, I want to mention something to you on how to detect strikes when you're fishing this finesse tackle like this. It's very different than most any other style of fishing that I know of. Most of the time, you're going you're gonna to throw it out there, whether it's a drop shot rig or a grub, like this rally grub I've got, or really any other kind of finesse tackle. Got it. He got it. Just like that. They're just going to pick it up and swim with it. And it's just going to feel like something heavy on the end of your line. It's not going to be a typical peck, peck worm bite like that. It's just going to feel like you've pulled into some grass or moss or something. And that's how you've got to know that you've got to bite. And that's a better smallmouth right there. All right. There you go. Just like that. Two quick smallies. Detect those strikes just by the feel of maybe a little extra weight and you feel a couple of little surges on your line pulling the other way. That's how they buy it a finesse bait, not a peck, not a thump. We'll be right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Got him. Oh, Smalley. Nice Smalley right there. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're on Bull Shoals Lake today. What's turned out to be a really windy day. I've got a few fish biting right there, and that's a decent smallmouth. Get in my net. All right. Look at this bad boy right here. There's a little fatty for you. 
That one hit a little rally grub, and that one's a lot fatter, chunkier little fish right there. That's a, that's a good bull shoal specimen for you right there. Let him go back in this gin clear water right here. What a gorgeous fish. All right, away he goes. When you come here, you're gonna be fishing rock, 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 and more rock. But there are subtle differences between the rock, and that's what's gonna hold the fish. So you go along these big chunk bluff banks, but if you find a little place that's got smaller pea gravel coming out and it shallows out a little bit, those are gonna be the places to key in on. I'll show you what a couple of those look like. But just visually with your eyes, scan the shoreline, and find those little irregularities, the places that are different, where a little cut goes in, a little point comes out, a little flat spot, a, a spot that's shallower than everything else. That fish came off of a little flat point behind us there that was only about uh, maybe 12, 14 feet deep, but it quickly drops off into about 30, 35, something like that. So find those subtle irregularities when you're fishing these lakes and you don't even really have to know what you're doing as long as you can use your eyes, find those kind of places and you've got a great chance to get bit by smallmouth, largemouth, or spotted bass. Here are more fishing and lake reports for you. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by the Dead Dog Saloon located on the Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. We're an area you need to put on your list of destinations to visit when you're in the Grand Strand. Open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come hang out with all the locals and see what it's all about here. Because we always like to say it's about the food, the view, and the music. But I tell you what, let's talk about saltwater this week. So many things going on in the inlet. I've got boats coming by me left and right here flounder fishing. I'm a little jealous. Get out with some good live mud minnows or mullet right now. You'll have a great time trolling in those favorite spots. Also, the weak fish in South Carolina are starting to show up on those reefs. This time of the year, they get out there into that spawning mode. You can catch some three, four, and five pound weak fish. Using some small stink silvers or jig fish, get on top of those wrecks and jig. You're gonna get mixed in with some other stuff such as bluefish and Spanish this time of the year, but you will have a great time catching some of the biggest weak fish of the season. Also, the offshore fishery is incredible right now. That warm water starting to move in. We've got some good, good bait that are making their way up. We're starting to see some good defined temperature breaks. Get out there, fish those temperature breaks, and you're gonna come home with an incredible bag of fish from Wahoo, tuna, to dolphin. Also, the bottom species will be opened up in the next couple weeks for grouper. Get ready to get out and get on top of your favorite live bottom and have a good time catching your gags and scamps. This has been your Carolinas Report this week brought to you by Dead Dog Saloon. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There's one. All right. Oh, yeah, a little small mouth. All right, don't flop water on the lens, thank you. Just a little smally, no big deal, back he goes. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday night at 6, or catch the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button and see lots of how-to and product videos by clicking the how-to button. Also, stay up to date with the latest fishing news, videos, and photos by clicking the follow button on our Twitter feed. And get lots of that same info by clicking the like button on our Facebook page. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. Motor guide trolling motors, because accuracy matters. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. David wants to know, on a crowded lake, how much room do I need to give another angler's boat? For the answer, we asked 2012 Classic Champion, Chris Lane. When it comes to the distance that you give another angler, you know, that, that gets real hairy in situations because whether you're fishing a point or whether you're fishing in back of a cove, um, if you're fishing against another angler and he, you know he's in that tournament, you know, kind of give him the same respect as you, would, as you think you would like to get from him. That could be boat to boat, that could be 100 yards apart. You got to remember they invert the fields on the Elite Series for us. So, you know, whatever goes around is going to come back around. 
Um, if you're out there and you're watching or if you're spectating or if you're just out there fishing, you know, hey, same thing. Treat others as you want to be treated as well. So, you know, a safe distance is, you know, at least a good long cast. Thanks, Chris. If you want some help from one of the pros, go to foxsportsoutdoors.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time for the Costa Catch of the Week, where someone wins a new pair of sunglasses. Back at the hotel and time for this week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest. Each and every week, someone wins a free pair of Costa sunglasses. And this week's winner is Steve Jones of Hurley, Mississippi, showing a seven pound, two ounce largemouth bass he caught at Lake Washington in Mississippi. If you'd like to have a chance to be our next winner in the contest, go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click in the Costa Catch of the Week area on the right side of the front page, follow the instructions and be sure to follow the guidelines to make your photo eligible. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles on the front page of their website by going back to the front page of ours, foxsportsoutdoors.com, click on the Costa logo and you can see all of their great products there, including the frame style that I was wearing on this week's episode, it's called Prop. Next up on the Academy Right Stuff feature, it's the Right Gear, specialized gear if you want to catch the spooky finicky bass in this really clear water at Bull Shoals Lake. And it begins with my first opportunity to fish a brand new fishing rod series on the market from the folks at Lou's this year. This is called the TP1 Spinning Rod Series. Now among lots of great features, I want to mention two of them. One is a brand new guide system. They're called microwave guides and I can't really explain yet why they work, but I fished all day long with two spinning rods and never got one wind knot. The nemesis of every spinning rod angler is the wind knot and I never got one all day with these guides. They are absolutely unbelievable. And the wind grips, these are soft, flexible grips made of the same material that golf club grips have been made for for many years. They feel great in your hands. And there are two basic baits that we use to catch the fish today. First, a drop shot rig. It begins with a drop shot weight on the end. There are special weights made for this application and a standout hook, which when you put pressure on your line, makes that hook stand out horizontally. I used on the back of that a Jean LaRue salt head shaky worm. And then the other bait that we used, that is a Jean LaRue rally grub, and the head is a fairly heavy one, about 3 eighths of an ounce. Hey, I'd like to talk to you about two terms. The first one is entitlement. It's having the right to something and going around acting like it. And I can tell you that that is a real turnoff to those that you come in contact with. But the second word is humility. It's choosing to act more humble and like you deserve less than you actually do. And I can promise you this, as you live your life, choosing to act humble will win you many more friends and influence lots more people. From Bull Shoals Lake in Northwest Arkansas, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.